Hello everyone, Jack here, and this video is going to be a quick guide of how to edit circuits using the Design Lab software. Um, for the and in this video, we're going to use the Papilio Duo, uh, which has an audio wing connected to the CH wing slot, and the uh, USB cord is connected to the FPGA USB socket. Okay, so let's switch over to Design Lab. And um, we're going to start out with an existing example. So when you open up Design Lab, it takes you to a table of contents. And we're going to scroll down to the audio wing, the hardware and audio wing section. And then we're going to use the YM2149 audio chip example. OK, so now Design Lab doesn't let you modify existing examples. so. If we were to try to edit the circuit, it will come up and it'll say this is a library circuit, cannot be edited, and then ask us ask us to save to a new location. So let's go ahead and save to a new location. We'll call it um, simple underscore two audio. Okay, so this opens up for us and it reminds us that we need to um, remove the define statement that associates this sketch with um, the library. So we need to go ahead, if we're going to edit our own library or our own circuit, circuit I'm sorry, we need to define that, we need to delete that line. Okay, so deleting that line lets us edit our own version of our, the circuit, the copied circuit. So let's hit edit circuit. And this will bring up the Xilinx ISC Webpack software um, with the project, the circuit that we want to edit. So you need to make sure that you have the ISC software installed. And uh, I'll put a link to the guide of how to get that installed. So once it comes up, we're going to want to find the top level uh, file in our project. And you can always tell what that is because it's got this little tree icon where it's two... Um, things on the bottom and then the green selection on the top. So double click on that and it's going to open up the schematic. So we can take a look at the schematic file and what we see is that we have a ZPUino soft processor uh, and we have several different, we have three different audio chips connected to the wishbone slots. So this is a audio pass through chip that you use to play mod files. This is the one we'll be using, the YM2149 audio chip, and it's connected to, if we zoom in, we can see it's connected to wishbone slot 6. Okay. And then we've got the Commodore 64 SID audio chip connected to slot 8. We're not going to use those two, but this is a general purpose circuit that we copied uh, that has more functionality that we need. So if you want to uh, zoom back out to the main view, it's really easy if you just hold down the control key and uh, hit your left mouse button and then scroll up to the left, it'll do the zoom fit. When you release, uh, it will go to the full view. Or you could just go up here and uh, zoom to full view. Okay, so continuing to look at the rest of the circuit, all three audio chips feed into one audio mixer and then the audio mixer uh, mixes together the audio from the three different chips and presents it out on one signal um, and then that signal goes to a splitter so it will feed both the left and right side of the audio wing so what I was thinking a quick and easy thing that we could do uh, just to show an example is why don't we go ahead and connect another audio wing to the CL wing slot. At first I was just going to show moving the audio wing to a different wing slot, but uh, you know, since this is an FPGA and it's complete it's very flexible, I figured why not just go ahead and add uh, another audio wing uh, connector and show how you can output audio to to both the wings at the same time. Okay, so to get started with this, we're going to want to delete the placeholder from the CL wing. We're going to want to delete the two-way splitter because we want to add a four-way splitter. Let's add, let's delete this little segment of wire. And then let's go to our 
uh, symbol library and first of all let's find the audio wing that should be under Papilio hardware and we have it here the wing audio so we'll click on it we'll bring it out we'll drag it and drop it it's there we also could have uh, when it, well, we also could have done it another way one point I wanted to make is whenever you delete an item like that a lot of times it will leave these little wires behind make sure you delete the wires okay we could have also just selected this copied it control C and then control V and then get another copy of the audio wing so a couple different ways you could do that alright so let's go to our symbol library and uh, we want to find the four-way splitter which is under the wishbone peripherals at this point and we're gonna drag it out let's just go ahead and line this up here and then let's draw some connections from there to there there to there we'll connect this and this uh, that's a little funky let's just move it make it look a little nicer Okay, and then we need to make a final connection from the audio out of the mixer to the four-way splitter. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's just scroll out, zoom out, and uh, we see everything. Now, the other thing that I think it would be nice to do is that since we won't be using the AVR chip, um, the, the Atmega AVR chip, the Arduino compatible chip, with this circuit design, why don't we just go ahead and disable it right now it's connected to the user switch so if the user switch is up it runs and if the user switch is down it's disabled but let's just look at how you would permanently disable it so we're gonna disconnect it from the switch by uh, deleting this uh, IO connection and we're gonna delete any wires connected that are left behind and then if you read here it says replace the duo SW with a pull up if you want to disable the AVR chip so what we're going to do is we're going to go to symbols, we're going to select all symbols, and let's just search for a pull up. There we go, we got the pull up. Let's drag it out. Let's pop it on there and connect it. And now that should disable our Arduino, um, our AVR chip permanently. Well, while the circuit is loaded. Okay, so to synthesize this circuit, we go to design. We make sure that we have the top level selected and then you can double click on generate programming file that will do the trick a lot of times what I do like what I like to do if you ever run into any problems it's important to know that you can always go to project clean up project files and then generate programming files in this case we're not really changing anything drastically so just double clicking on this uh, should do the trick so yes we do want to save our changes to the schematic okay now to see um, the error messages or I'm sorry not the error message so what I usually do to maximize the view so that I can see the schematic well is you can toggle this transcript transcript window um, and it's the transcript window that all of the um, messages of while it's synthesizing the design fly by so whenever I'm editing a circuit I unselect it and then when I'm synthesizing a circuit I select it and bring it back up so uh, this is going to take a little while I'm going to pause it and come back when it's done okay we're back and the circuit is done synthesizing um, to know it's done you should see this message the process generate programming file completed successfully so let's go ahead and minimize this and go back to uh, our sketch and design lab and so now that it is completed um, actually one thing one step that I missed one thing that we should have done from the very beginning was to set the board type so you want to go to tools and then board Papilio FPGA boards and make sure you have Papilio Duo FPGA ZPU Wino selected I already had it selected which is why the correct circuit came up but if the correct one wasn't set it would have brought up something for like the Papilio Pro or something else okay so um, the, now that we have the correct board selected we need to make sure that one we have our board connected uh, make sure you're connecting to the FPGA port 
make sure it's showing up in device manager and then you don't need to set the COM port in order to upload a bit file or a load a circuit uh, it automatically detects it so we can just click on load circuit okay so it said you want to look to make sure it says done burning bit file um, and so what this means is we now have that circuit that we just generated loaded to our FPGA so we should be able to hear audio output from both the CH and the CL wing connection or wing slot so uh, well but before we do that we aren't running we need to load a sketch to the ZPUino soft processor that loads a YM file so it actually plays a YM file over the uh, to the chip so let's click this is where we need to go to tools and make sure we have the correct serial port selected it should correspond to our serial port that we see in device manager and now we can hit upload what this will do is it will upload um, not only the YM file that we have with this sketch but also the code to play the YM file okay so it just completed and you should be able to probably hear the audio in the background let me turn it up a little bit okay so now if we go to the view let me turn it down just a bit okay if we go to the view the camera view we we see that there is an audio wing connected to the CH wing slot what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect another wing to the CL wing slot and I'm just gonna plug in the other one and there we go it works as expected we are now hearing audio out of both we can switch between both or we could plug both into two separate stereo receivers and would get the same output output from both <laughs>